basic warm-ups. The way I like to do warm-ups is in a way that I can remember, easily remember them in the future. So what I do is usually start from the top and work my way down. So the first one I like to do is arms up, point your fingers up, and circle. And every time you circle, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Don't worry about going fast on this. This isn't exercise or stretch or a warm-up routine about being fast. This is just about getting your muscles warmed up and going. Now this time we're going to go the other way, but as we go the other way, the circle is going to get smaller and smaller. Remember, we're not moving with our wrist or our elbows, we're circling with our shoulders. Okay, good. Now the next one, take your hands, put your fingers here, touching your shoulders. Big circles. We're going to make big circles with our elbows. Again, not concerned with speed. Concerned about just good, fluid motions. Other way. Try your best in these warm-ups not to make any herky-jerky quick motions like that if your muscles are not warmed up that could be bad hey that's stop now tilt your head to the side a lot of people will say you don't need to warm up because you're not able to warm up before a real life self-defense situation I disagree with them well I, I'm pretty sure that you're not usually able to warm up before a real life self defense street situation. Now tilt your head back. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't warm up when you could. Head down. So warm up as much as you could and to say what they say to me sounds like them saying well at some point in your life you're going to be in a swimming pool where a little kid's going to pee in the swimming pool so you should always just be in a pool that a little kid swims in or pees in the swimming pool. I think that's bad logic. So head up, look over your left shoulder. So anytime you are, if you unfortunately ever do find yourself in a real life on the street self-defense situation, put your head the other way. Yes, that is true. You'll probably not be able to warm up. And your performance will probably suffer for it and later you may even get some injuries because of it I know I have it's straight but hopefully we'll never be in that situation but we can be in a regular practice workout routine and so that will occur much more often so you should warm up you should stretch out so now put your feet together hands on your hips now we're going to circle with our hips try not to circle with your head Big circles with your hips. It's called the hula stretch. I think it's obvious why. Other way. I find this a very helpful stretch, especially if uh, for us older people, if you are driving a lot, you're in the car a lot, and my lower back starts to ache after a while, and I think this helps with that. I am not a doctor though, so please consult your physician. So now we're gonna move down further. Stand on one foot, and the other foot's going to come up on the toes. From here, circle. Circle the other way. Good. Switch. Circle. Circle the other way. Good. Stop. Now we went from head to toe, so now we're going to kind of go back up just a little bit. So hands here. Circle the wrist. Circle the other way. I've seen some instructors in some schools do it where they go back and forth, forward and back. That's, that's fine too. Whatever works best for you. Just be really careful if you've not warmed up your wrists, stretch those out yet. If you do it very quickly uh, in a jerking sort of motion, it might actually hurt your wrist a little bit. So go slow. 
Okay, good. Now, usually what I do from there is I usually go down to the ground. Hopefully you'll be indoors or in a nice spot, not outside like this, but I'm gonna make the sacrifice so you learn. So we're gonna be on the ground. Put your feet out. This is for the inside of the legs. Um, you really do, if you can, want this to be stretched out, warmed up if possible. It helps movement a lot. The times that I have injured myself in sort of self-defense, real life self-defense situations where I didn't have time to warm up was always in this area here on the inside of my leg. All right, so hands up over your head. I'm gonna go side to side, touch both hands to one foot. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Now, stay right there. Um, in this stretch, if you bring your legs back in or bend your knees between the sets, it's almost like you have to restart, like you've lost some of your progress. So now, take one leg, stretch it back a little bit further. You can do both legs, but to me, I think it's easier just to do one leg. So hands up. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Now, take the other leg. We're doing three sets of this. Stretch it out just a little bit further. Hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Excellent. Now, from there, what we're going to do is take our hands, put them in front, right here. Now, if that starts to give you a little bit of a stretch, you start to feel a little bit uncomfortable at that point, that's where you need to stop. But if you can, kind of walk your hands out just a little bit further so that you lean forward a little bit further. If you still feel comfortable, go a little bit further. If you don't, stop right there. If you feel okay, go a little bit further. And remember, there's different types of pain, really. There's, well, I'm slightly uncomfortable pain. And then there's, I just heard something go snap, crackle, or pop. That second one, that's when you need to stop or take a step back. A little bit further. If you can, if you can't, that's okay. Hold where you're at. Or even retract a little bit. If you can, keep on going till you can get all the way down, forehead to the ground. Then when you're done, very slowly, come back up. Don't go fast. Now for this next one, always been a bit of a challenge for me even when I was a kid. Pull your feet in together. Grab your feet with both hands. Stay there as you breathe in through your nose. Try to relax your legs. Do not make this like bobbing up and down motion. That actually is pretty bad for you. So just kind of relax. Stay there as you breathe in. Breathe out. Pull your forehead down. Your goal is to get your nose to your toes, if you can. But again, you get to a point where it's too uncomfortable. You hear something go snap, crackle, or pop, you should stop. Stay there as you breathe in. Breathe out. Okay. Usually you want to do that and hold that for about 10 seconds. Further, if you need to, or, or for a longer period if you need to. Or you can do a little bit shorter time and build up to a bigger time if you like. So that's the basic warm-ups. At the end, you could even add squats and push-ups, which is what we do a lot of times in our in-person classes. Let's do animals. Yeah, okay, sounds good. All right. So, all right, a little background on the animals. 
Um, traditionally, most Singhi martial arts schools, there are 12. I actually know and have, and have taught all 12. Uh, but from my perspective, six of those 12 are really redundant with other things that we do. So I don't normally teach those unless it's special request. Uh, so most I teach six. The other six I do sometimes teach. Um, so that's how we do it. Every school, their animal's a little bit different. For ours out of the six, uh, what we'll be doing is dragon, phoenix, although a dragon I caught bronze dragon just to differentiate it because we have so many other things with dragon in the name. So dragon, phoenix, eagle bear, wolf, squirrel, and monkey. All right. Squirrel and monkey are kind of similar in a way as far as idea because they're both quick, fast movie things, but they're still pretty different. Um, you'll see in some schools, uh, oh, and chicken. I forgot chicken, sorry. In some schools, you'll see something like they'll have chicken, and then they'll also have golden chicken or fighting chicken or <coughs> something like that. But that's basically their way of saying too fast about, ones. Uh, from Seafood Dominic about that. Is there a difference between like our style chicken and, and gold chicken, or is there just enough similarities to be different? You know, kind of I, the best way I can explain it is in our style, our chicken lines up mostly with other lineages golden chicken. Okay. Um, and then there are most most of those will have a second one. I think so, fighting chicken, but we don't. Okay. Ours would be replaced with squirrel. Best way I can explain. All right. So I'm gonna start with the first one. It's be dragon or bronze dragons, I call it, like I said, just to make it different. So, just like the traditional five elements, we're going to start at an angle here. Hands here. So, we do a bow and salute. Come around. You're opening. Now, this one is really similar to some of the moves in the series and techniques in the five elements. So, this hand comes down, and as that comes down, do your vertical punch. That is it traditionally. If you wanted to really uh, alter it or adapt it to you, you could and make it a water strike. That'd be fine. But traditionally, vertical punch. As you do that, your right leg comes up in a dragon kick. All right. Then you step it down and then come through. All right. That's the first part. You guys remember Reaper sweeps? Bow, <clears throat> salute, they opening. Come up here, boom, goes down, come out. Now, in real life, if you don't feel like you have the time to do the transition, that's fine, you can skip it. So next thing from there is, right leg comes up, reaper swing. Yeah, leg. reaper sweep is imagine your opponent's right here in front of me, their left leg forward, so they would be this way, right? I'm here, so I'll take my back leg, circle it behind their leg and up into the knee, then bring it up. As I'm doing okay, probably yeah. push or something like that. So if we look at, for example, if I'm, if I'm actually doing the whole form, it's here. Then we step and push, right, in the form. So that is to sort of emulate the reaper sweep and push them down. Even though in real life you'd maybe be doing the sweep and the push at the same time, and the form's a little bit staggered. But that's mostly just uh, you know keep the pattern. All right, so does that help? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Of. That's what I thought it was. Okay. All right, so I feel like we probably called it something different. No, we've always called that Reaper Sweep. I just don't remember. Um, now, Robbie, I think you were one of the people I talked Snake to back in the day in the Dungeon Dojo. And there's a Snake Sweep also. It's a little bit different. So you might be thinking of that too. So here, do that. Steps down. Now, keep in mind that could be a shin scrape as you go down with that, uh, that dragon kick as the foot sets down. 
here. Now, right leg, reaper sweeps up, step it down, push. Now, from here, grab, pull that in, and your back foot steps up, elbow strike down. And from there, step, dragon slam. So you strike it down with the elbow? Maybe. So back, Give me a second. I think. Yes. Uh, all right. I had that backwards. I had that elbow strike to the jaw. Meh. You know me. As long as it's a good target. And one by down, we're not... I don't want you to think some targets are out of, out of bounds. If you go down and hit the jaw, that's fine. Okay. If you go down and hit the clavicle, that's fine. If you go down and hit the top of the shoulder, that's cool. If you go down just as block, whatever. So I'm gonna keep it general, it's it's down. I always have to check myself on this when I get confused with checking. About. Salute, come around here. So, three way attack, bring it here, bring it up. Reaper sweep, push. Grab, step in, elbow. In real life, you can change that. Boom. Go flat to the jaw. If the situation required, but traditionally, we're going down. I think that's so we can then go smooth into a dragon slam. Alright. Any questions? I thought there was uh, kind of like an uppercut with when you came up with the reaper sweep. Is that not still there? It's a, well, it's a push. No, before the push. Right there. You might be thinking of that. That's here. It's, boom. Right there. Okay. Then it goes down, and then there, like uh, like the turn and sing you would, right? Okay. Then come up, push. Now, if you want to change that to an uppercut, uh, you could, but that, to me, takes away what our goal is, is to push them down. But you could very easily say, well, I'm going to hold them there, keep them grappled as I uppercut them into the ribs. That's fine. Yep. So here, here, boom. Grab, step, elbow, step, dragon slam. Alright, let me check, y'all. Yeah. I thought somebody was trying to join us, but I don't think they are. Uh, Kyle messaged Facebook. Oh, okay. Alright. Alright, how's that feel? <clears throat> Let's do it again. To be honest, this is one I don't really practice as much anymore. Reaper sweep, push, grab, step. Elbow, dragon slam. Now, once you get there, on that side, do it the opposite. Right there. And you just keep on going. Right. Elbow, dragon slam. Then I would do it twice. Then I would turn. <coughs> so that is dragon out of the six, what we're doing, six animals. Traditionally 12 animals. Alright, so next one is Phoenix. Some schools call it Phoenix, but very few as far as I can tell. I've also heard it called Picky Foe, which is a bird that is native to Southeast Asia, to South China, something like that. Sort of like a quail, but not really a quail. It's just a Picky Foe. It's not like you know, like that's the Chinese version of like eagle or something. It's just, it's just picky foe. Um, you said picky foot? <laughs> no, not picky foot, not picky foot. Picky foe is my, I don't know Chinese or Indonesian. So I don't know if that's, but that's how I always heard it. Um, okay. So this for us kind of takes the place of that. The other schools may have different things. Heck, I know one school that has unicorn as one of theirs. So this is one of Robbie's favorites. So if I'm not wrong, Robbie can let me know. 
So this one is a lot of uh, replacement stepping. And what we mean by replacement stepping is, let's say somebody's swinging at your leg and you raise the foot up, okay? Um, also, it's a lot of gaining distance. It's sort of like, if you've ever seen long fist martial arts, it's sort of like long fist. So, from here, our dragon stance, first thing we're going to do is come up, step here, lift the leg up, punch. Or guarding here. Then we're going to move backwards. Punch there. Okay. A little bit of bounciness on this, and I know. Eric, back in the day, this is one that we adapted when we need to for people with bad knees. Can you lower your camera just a little bit so I can see your legs a little bit better? Yeah. Just the, the stepping on my other more. Do you remember this one at all, Rob? Yeah, I don't remember it, but it's one of my blocked up test find something to go for a second. Yeah. So here, come up, oh, then yeah. step back, block down punch. Now, we do our phoenix kick. So that's when it comes in. Kick one, kick two. So if I'm facing you, it's one, two. Also, we can call that kick the knee killer. Your right. own knee, not the opponent's. That's a joke. Bow. Salute. Well, half of, our, half of our students don't have these anymore, so. Yeah. Yeah. Especially by half, you mean uh, Zach and Eric and me. So, we're here. So, we step out. Big jump. Right leg comes up. Punch. This is guard. We jump back. Land on your right. Left foot pulls back up. Here. Walk down as you do. Punch. Phoenix kick, Phoenix kick. Go back to your stance now. Jump forward on your left, and we kind of twist our body, right leg comes up. And that's a kick block, that's what that is. The knee smash, Phoenix kick. I'm gonna step back for this one. Butterfly. This was a lot easier when I was, my balance is better. Yes. Robbie, was there one butterfly or two? Do you remember? I think it was just a one. I think it was. <coughs> just one. I think it was a one, then drop, then another one, right? Yep. Yep, is that right? Okay. Yeah, I've said yeah, that. I, I, won't know, I won't know until I do it. I right. can't remember it. Yeah, I'm the same way. And I always, I was like, well, Robbie will remember this one. Back? No. Punch. One Phoenix kick. So that's inside. And then really that's a round kick. Come up. Kick block. Smash the knee. Phoenix kick. Butterfly. Down. Yeah. Come up. Butterfly kick. Push. Push kick, then double jump. Then do we do one more eagle stand drop? Then come up, dragon stand. Is that, is that part of the turn? Yeah. I thought it was just a dragon, reverse dragon slam. That could be, but I don't know if that's because we adapted it for bad knees or not. Okay. So, but I, I, I think it was, I think it was looking at both. I thought it was, we go down and then we, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, but I know, Eric, I know what you're talking about. I thought we'd cut that out for bad knees. Okay. But I could be wrong. Turn, reverse turn, slam, gotcha. I could be wrong. Like I said, this is not one of my great ones. So, this is for what? lanky, skinny You can people. make it whatever you want. So. so, one, two, then kick block, smash the knee. Phoenix, butterfly, down, come up, butterfly, here, push kick, then after the push, double jump, 
down. Double slam. Or dragons. <coughs> uh, the kick is the kick block. Uh, do you hop into that? Yeah. I can't remember. In the form I don't you do. If that was what we're supposed to do, or if that's just what I did because I weigh ninety five pounds and can jump everywhere. Both. Uh, uh, well, and this goes back to what? the good knees version of it. Is yes. We're well, talking about having that jump there, right? In the form, come in. The uh, the kick block with your leg. We you raise your leg up to do the after the after the Phoenix so kick. That. that. Oh, then right the, here. okay. Yeah. I feel like I jumped into it. Yeah, you do. Traditionally. In a real life situation, you may not want to. If it's bad on your knees, you may not want to. Then again, if your knees are bad, I suggest don't do it in this form. That's why I don't do it that much anymore. All right, let's do it one more time. Then we'll move on. Here. All right, step one. Now, this technique is actually really good. I used to use this kind of lunging punch a lot. Back. One. Two. That's a Phoenix round. This is a jump. Could be a hop. Could be a step. Kick block. Smash the knee. Phoenix kick. There. Down. Come up. Do it again. Push kick, double jump, down, dragon time. How's that fit? <coughs> Alright, so that is Bronze Dragon, that is Phoenix, and I'll put this up, give me a few days to get it up, and you guys can review. Alright, so let's see. So you go bear? Yep. Okay, that's what I remember. Alright, Eagle Bear. It's not two forms, it's one form. Eagle Bear has been in almost all the ones I've seen in person. But all of the twelve animals I've seen in person, there's been a version of Eagle Bear. So, have you changed what six animals we're doing again? No. That's always been the same. Yeah. With Eagle Bear, Dragon, Phoenix, Squirrel. Well, I mean, hey, I got Griffin and Wolf on my wolf and chicken. Griffin is um, uh, Eagle, Bear. Eagle Bear. Eagle Bear and Griffin, same thing. I thought Griffin might be less confusing to just call it Griffin instead of Eagle Bear. But apparently not, so my bad. Well, I think Griffin was Eagle Bear with part force. Yeah, it is. And that, that's well, that's still the way I teach it. All right, good to see you, Austin. Hello. All right, so everybody, this is Austin. I met Austin uh, here a little while back, and uh, he's going to be joining us tonight. <clears throat> so Austin working on singy animal forms. So yes, Robbie Griffin is Eagle Bear. I just went into old school in my head for a minute. It does include horse though. Horse is one of the other 12 animals that we do. I rolled it into Eagle Bear because it's literally a move. One move, yeah. Yeah, and I thought that was just, there's no reason to have that its own thing. All right. It's uh, the sink outside block. I'm up to a certain much. Right. right. But it is a really good move. Um, for like kicks, low kicks especially, I really like it. So, <clears throat> Eagle Bear, AKA Silver Dragon version. Griffin. So bow. Salute. Here. Now, this is going to be a hanging block. Come around. Claw, like a grab. Then we're going to kind of do a lunge. Not really a bow stance for those of you who have any background in like Taekwondo or anything like that. It's a little bit different. We're actually going to lunge. As we lunge, we also claw. Then we come around, wind up, step, uppercut. And we do the same exact thing on the other side. Hang your block, grab, grab, uppercut. Now, of course.
course in their life, I would not want you in a combat or self-defense situation to actually wind up like, you know, what's his name, Cramden? Jackie Gleason? No, Cramden. Don't do that. So, in the beginning, Griffin, Eagle Bear, <clears throat> here. So block, one, two, uppercut. And again, one, two, uppercut. Now, combat application for that, this is really just a dragon slam. You're just changing your footwork, and you're we're making a more emphasis, a bigger emphasis on grabbing. So that would be, for example, uh, grab the elbow, grab the neck, grab the wrist, grab the shoulder. Any combination like that. One, two. Um, the way I see it in my head would be grab the arm, step in, kind of torque the arm so that you can pull the pressure on that joint. Then uppercut and thrift. Right? That's just me. You may have your own way of thinking of it. A bow. Salute. Here. Hanging block. Grab. Grab. Claw. Step. Uppercut. Right? Hanging block. Grab. Grab. Step. Uppercut. Now, this is kind of a tricky one, and really and truly, if we're doing this traditional, the, the foot work, you kind of shift and change. You could just do a simple step if you're not into the fancy footwork. But let's do it once with the fancy footwork. So here, step, and you double hammer fist. Boom, boom. I don't know if you'd do it like that in a combat situation, but that concept is what I'm worried about. The continuous attacks. Robbie and I have seen that done in real life in weapons fighting events. It works really good. So one, two, but then we do it again on the other side. One, two, but. Okay. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes. So again, bow. Salute. Here. So hang. Hanging guard, hanging block, one, two, step, uppercut. One, two, step, uppercut, double hammer fist, double hammer fist. Okay? Alright, let's go through that once a little bit faster. going to do a bear kick. Some schools call that a mule kick, Austin, so that may be how you know it. Yeah. <coughs> Here, at the same time, grab the throat. Then you step back. That's one of those I think that is for form's sake and real and for really I think that's a balancing exercise. I would never try that in real life in a real two people or trying to attack you thing. Uh, I think there's better ideas for it to handle that situation. But it is good training in the balance sense. And these animal forms are really good for cardio. <clears throat> so anyway, so here, boom. Now steps back into dragon stance. Horse block, it's down and low, up to a block here, step, and punch. Then, slip and bow, you're done. You done. Any questions on that? No. All right. So bow. <clears throat> Salute. This is Griffin or Eagle Bear. Really and truly, it's Griffin because we're adding horse to it. So one, two. Fist. Double hammer fist. Strike or 
kick crab. So if you were just doing eagle bear, you'd stop right there, really. Horse block, step, and purple punch. Salute and back. Do you just do it once, or do you do it once one way, you turn, and do it another way? Yes, that thing. Do it. Really, you would do it if you don't salute and bow. Uh, we didn't hear. Then we would do our turn, and then we would start over. Shut up. All of them are either two up, two back, or one up, one back. It depends on which side you end on at the end of each sequence. <clears throat> All right, so do we want to go further? Do we want to hit wolf or want to stick there? Let's go with wolf. That's tiger, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see wolf. Wolf is uh, aspects of tiger. But here's one where Brian, Tibu Brian, has to be tell it up front. Wolf is tiger from all the different tiger styles that Brian's seen over the years, not just seeing E. Okay. So, so wolf is like, it's a custom, I'll call it. Even though a lot of it is traditional. But also, I put my favorite stuff, because when I was younger, I did a lot of different tiger style. Because uh -huh. I could run in and, and get hit five times and didn't care. Now that I'm older, I can't do that anymore. Uh, but yes. It takes the place of it in lineage or lineup a little bit, although we still do teach the traditional tiger. I know the traditional tiger and teach it on special request, and it would be number seven in our lineup if we cared to go that far. Okay, so, wolf. I know it's a really complicated answer, Eric. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. So, here. So, we're left side forward. Now, this one has a really good reason for being left side forward, besides just it being traditional. Our opponent's in front of us and swings at us with a big right arm haymaker, right? Which I just realized the other day, we assume this happens a lot. But you know what? It does happen a lot. So now we step, block, outside block, strike the throat. And this is a grab. Those of you at home, please do not do this on anyone. Um, remember what Spider-Man said. So here. Now. From there, this arm wraps. So that's to say they are punching us or swinging at us. I block and then very quickly step in further, wrap arm up, or wrap their arm up around my arm. Okay? So there, boom, wrap, and then step, elbow strike. Alright? Now, here sometimes, if you're not paying attention, I sometimes get this confused with modern five elements fire. And I'll transition between the two. So from here, step out to Tiger's Claws. Right there. Um, I'm reluctant to do that on video, show the application for that. But next time we're together, remind me, I'll show you what that is. Well, there's a couple really good ones for that. All right, how's that feel? So how do you guys like the video virtual format? Considering you don't have to drive, it's still getting used to. Yeah, me too. Uh, I think I think you should make Eric drive to every class. <laughs> <laughs> I think Rob should come pick me up for every class. Deal. Let's do that. Uh, so we come around here. So what? It's like a 13-hour drive from here to there. Uh, no, it's like oh, wow. it's like 18. Jeez. So step out. We're lunging into the swing. That's so swing at us. We're going it's into 14 it. by Eric. Right, so here. Yeah. Grab the throat. Wrap. Step. Elbow. Then we come out. Wait, I think I forgot something. Here and down. <laughs> is, isn't it supposed to be elbow? It's supposed to be hammer fist. Uh, then wrap. Hammer fist. Yeah. And then the circle. Yeah. Okay, I thought that was. No. That's what I was wanting to do. Yeah, you're right, Robbie. Yeah. I'm sorry. So here, then elbow, then there. Yeah, and this is one of my favorites. I didn't think I'd ever forget that. Sorry. Let's start. Well, I thought it was. I thought it was part of fire or something. I was like, maybe I'm just no, getting mixed up. Across like you the did. elbow, hammer fist, tai chi flip. Yeah. Video, I get confused thing. with fire a lot. Even when I say I get confused with fire, I still get confused with fire. 
Oh, I, I was teaching fire last semester, man, and I, I started doing some uh, uh, wool. So I was like, yep. Yeah. Okay. So there. Then right. I then step in elbow. Then hammer fist, like a vertical yeah. or a horizontal, I mean. Yeah. Side to side hammer fist. Then, then big flip. Touchy ball, touchy flip. Right. Then knee. Flip yep. over. There. Then grab. Pull back to the knee. That's a cat stance or a wolf stance. Okay. Let's do that again, but this time I'm going to face the camera. I think that'll be helpful. So here, bow. So this one is actually, if you get the individual moves out of it, it's a fairly brutal one. Here. Wrap. Step. Elbow. Side to side hammer fist. Big touchy spin the ball. Hold the ball here. Knee. Elbow or flip. Come out. Grab. Pull back. Grab. How's that feel? Well, does it go for the wolf that? Yeah, now we go for the wolf step. Alright, so let's do this again, then we'll break down the wolf step, because that's a that's a weird one. I like it though. Um, those of you interested in SCA, it actually, you can use it to pretty good effect in some situations of this SCA, stick fighting. Well, it's loose. Austin, you'll see, Robbie and I, we've done a lot of SCA fighting over the years, so is Jacob, if he's still on here. Um, and a lot of the stuff we do in here, we apply in the SCA. So we do our bounder salute. So step to the left, block, strike, wrap, step, elbow, hammer fist. Bring it around here. Knee, elbow. And you're really going to drop into horse dance there. Grab, back. Okay. Let me do that one more time facing the camera, then we'll do a little stepping. So bow. Loops. Lock. Strike. Really in real life, that'd be from the same time. Wrap. Step. Elbow. Hammer fist the side. Um, you've grabbed them. Pull them in as you elbow to the jaw. Hammer fist to the back of the head. Or the jaw. Right. And this is a wrap. That could be a block. That's a, that's a grapple. That's a lot of things. Here. Step. Elbow. That is a flip. If you see this done in person, we and we will do it at some point in person. There. Come out. Grab. Pull back. Right. So you may have seen on the group. Let's talk about maybe doing a summer camp. That's what I was thinking about doing. Is all these videos where we can't really get together and do the applications together do a summer camp, uh, assuming that the plague passes or we get a vaccine or something in three or four days and we can get together, do some sparring, do some stick fighting, and work on these applications. That way everybody gets them down. And if anybody wants to do belt testing there, they can do that too if that's something they're interested in. Alright, so, does that make sense on that form so far? All right, so now let's talk about wolf stepping. Wolf stepping is really a combination of a couple different steps. So I think of it as an advanced step. Our two most basic is uh, single and double stepping. Two of our advanced is chicken stepping and wolf stepping. So here. Um, best way I can think of it is think of it that you're going at an angle, then from an angle, you all of a sudden turn and go straight. So it's here, here, okay? And this is part of this form. You do it four times, traditionally, but if you want to practice it by, your, by itself, you can. If you're running out of room and you don't have enough room to practice it, because it's a, it takes a lot of space to do all four wolf steps, you can leave it out, or you can practice, just do one or two, whatever you need to do. So, it's from here. Hopefully everybody can see my feet. I'm going to do a side step, just like I did before. A side lunge, just like when we were doing the block crap. There. Okay, then we're going to do a single step forward. 
Okay? But this will be really kind of fast. It looks almost like you're doing like a stutter step. Right? So now, that would be from the left side. Then we'll bring up our right foot here. Change your hands. Lunge. And then go straight. And see we'll step that way. So, uh, do we throw in hard blocks with our, like we don't change our hands, but throw our hands out like uh, aggressively with each step, or is that something I just did? No, that is a thing you sense. will do. So from here, it would be block as you step out. Then we're continuing yeah. to block as you go forward. If you wanted to you make that more aggressive, you could even turn that into a shield block here. If you're going kind of slow, or you're really getting into a scrum of people. But at the very least, it would be there. Then I'm backing up, but don't do that. And then right foot comes over here. Change your hands. There. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I remember all of Wolf. Oh, good. Surprisingly. Alright, so. Um, if, if I got the ending right. We're going to do the condensed version right here, so let's do it from the beginning. So we're here. Step. Block. Tiger's mouth. Wrap. Elbow, fist, bring it around, knee, step it down, elbow, or that's a flip actually, grab, here. Now we're going to do um, wolf step, one, two, three, that's a short version, but I'm running out of room here, four, right? Now. From there, we have to kind of imagine what's going on. I'm going to turn this way so you can see it. From there, imagine someone tackles us from behind. So we're going to turn around, elbow down, then water strike, or it could be an uppercut. Okay. Robbie, am I forgetting something there? No, that's exactly what I remember. Okay, me too. Make sure. All right, does that make sense? Really, I think I have my hand. you'll be ending on your right side. So this comes around in here and you turn. This comes over. Elbows down. Water Now, you'll sit into your stance. Do it again. Start over. Do the whole thing again. Turn, salute, back. <coughs> How's that feel? Wolf is too... Wolf and Eagle Bear are both two. One up, one down, right? Yes, correct. One up, one down. Yep. Phoenix is four, though. Yes, Phoenix is four. So here, step out and block. Strike throat, wrap, elbow, hammer fist, wrap it around, knee strike, elbow, grab, down. We'll step. One, one back up, wolf step two, wolf step three, wolf step four, you went right side forward, come around, elbow, water strike. Uh, Austin, a water strike is sort of like an uppercut, except instead of going in a cir or like a circular motion, you instead go straight at an angle. All right, so it's almost seven, so let's call it there for that. So we got Bronze Dragon, uh, we got Phoenix, we got Eagle Bear or Griffin, and we got Wolf.